Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Our highest priority is Jesus. Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. We sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. more time we sing glory to God oh, glory to God in the glory to God oh, I love you forever I love you forever I love you forever Lord, sing it from the depth of your heart. I love you forever. I love you forever. Be lifted forever. Be lifted forever. Be lifted. Forever, Lord, in and through my life, be lifted, be lifted forever, be lifted forever, be lifted. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna, forever. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. We worship, we worship, we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One more time, Hosanna to your name. Father, we're only here tonight because of your grace. We're here tonight because you are God, the King of all kings, the Lord of lords. We bow our hearts to worship you and to declare how much we love you. We have come tonight for a very definite encounter in your presence. The Bible declares that they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Therefore, we pray that the hallowed bread be broken tonight. Cause our eyes to see. Cause our ears to hear. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Let the lost be found. In the name of Jesus let light come from your throne and bring brightness and perspective to every area of darkness empower us by the ministry of your word let the results show in jesus name i pray god bless you good evening everyone please be seated hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. There is what you only get in the house of the Lord. You cannot get it in a bank. You cannot get it in an academic institution. You cannot get it in a hospital. It is only the presence of God that can bring 
the fullness of joy, pleasures even forevermore. Let me encourage us, therefore, to be and remain intentional. You must be very intentional as far as coming to the house of God is concerned. And then number two, opening up your spirit. See, you can be here and yet you are not here. Is that true? The Bible spoke about Mary and Martha, a contrast of two different people in the presence of Jesus. One sat quietly and she was listening. The other was around where things were happening, but it did not bless her. And she was offended. Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. He said, one thing is needful and that Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. When it was time to eat bread, he said, tell the people to sit down. If you cannot sit down, there's no bread for you. Sit down means pay attention. Be undistracted. Forget about whatever challenge, whatever it is. Anything the presence of God cannot solve cannot be solved. Are we together? Let me give you a guarantee, and I say this with every sense of humility and responsibility. And I've been saying this for many years. If you pay attention to the truths that I teach you, if you pay attention to these mysteries of the kingdom that the Lord brings to you week in, week out, I give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of the name of the Lord, your life will be an unending ending wonder first to you and then to all around you the things that we teach are not personal inventions we found them it is an ancient part it was not discovered by us no it's been there god by his grace granted us access to these things paul calls it the fellowship of the mystery are we together it will be dangerous it will even be evil to teach you opinions i think this is how it should be i suggest this is how it should be the truths that you hear and learn have been vetted by the integrity of scripture and then the life of people with uncommon results I made a covenant with God that I will never lead a people who would live defeated lives as though the realities of truth that we find in scripture were a lie. It is God's desire that in this order that you know him, this is eternal life, John 17 and verse 3, remember, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. That's eternal life. Then number two, to be equipped with the principles second to knowing god is spiritual enlightenment where you are equipped with the principles that make for a victorious life please listen believers a victorious life is not a wish a victorious life is more than a desire are we together it takes knowledge the administration of the life and the power of God in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. You need sufficient knowledge to thrive and to reign. Having knowledge is not enough. It must be knowledge enough to swallow up darkness. When a student fails an examination in most schools and most colleges, pass what we call a pass mark starts from say 40 or 45 pending on the standard now if say the pass mark is 45 percent if a student scores 40 percent he didn't get zero but he still failed is that true the person who did not write that exam the person who did not even come for the exam and the one who failed the exam will stay in the same category this is the terrible thing about life. So if you are going for this thing, it is best to go all out. So that you do not have the result of an unbeliever, the result of a frustrated Christian. 
make up your mind he's called it our season of marvelous light make up your mind some of you here are ministers of the gospel some of you here are business people it doesn't matter what field of endeavor make up your mind to fight ignorance every time you come here and every time you connect by way of uh, the, the internet or whatever television station you are opening up your heart as a communication of your desperation to end ignorance are we together they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness do you know many believers know what they want but they do not know what it takes to actualize what they want this is the assignment of the teaching priest hallelujah I know that I want a victorious life I know that I want a good home I know that I want good children I know that I want an excelling life but do you know what it takes to turn your desire to your experience we have agreed in this house and let me emphasize again that results matter please prophesy to yourself say results yes sir you will live a very defeated christian life if you downplay results in fact i give you a guarantee that your christian experience would be a frustrating one if you your life cannot capture sufficient results it is in your results that jesus is glorified hallelujah one of the ways we lift up jesus is that our lives command dimensions of results that dumbfound principalities and powers jesus wants the church to manifest the fullness of his glory please give us ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 9 and 10 my verse of emphasis is verse 10 i'm just i'm just preparing your heart it says and to make men see what is the fellowship of the mystery paul is speaking now which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by jesus christ 10 let's read together ready one to read to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by who the church the manifold wisdom of god so the entire the entire engracing that was given to apostle paul he's teaching the church in ephesus now that the reason why god so lavishly subjected me through this this rigorous spiritual training and granted me access to revelation is to bring you to this point that from your life and through your life there would be a display of such excellence your life becomes a living epistle you know what it means a living epistle means you become a continuation of everything written in scripture that means if someone forgets his bible at home he does not cry again when he sees you you become a continuation of what he was reading whatever he did not understand in his devotion in the morning your life becomes an explanation of it if he were studying about the favor of God and he didn't understand because of the context, the culture that was used, God will use you. He will personify and say, in addition to what you read, look at this life. If the person studies that God is all powerful, that God is able to deliver and save to the uttermost, you become an explanation, a clarification. To everything that scripture says this is why jesus was called the logos of god the thoughts of god whatever god was thinking jesus was acting out are we together it gives god great glory for the saints to access light shout light one more time say light high level spiritual illumination let me tell you the truth nothing empowers like light but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light god made many lights but there were two great lights 
that sustain the ability to exert dominion the bible says the first light was to rule in the day the second light was to rule in the night do you have that light if you do not have that light you cannot rule in the day if you do not have the one that rules in the night you cannot rule in the night please every time you come to the house of god the main auditorium here all the overflows outside and those following i want you to participate in everything that happens in the house of god most believers are careless about the entire time they spend in the presence of god they are distracted others come and they are having all kinds of business discussions while fire is coming from the altar other people are victims of slumber are we together other people are there but they are not there and what you are looking for is what god is answering and you see the way the way satan works is that the moment the word is coming the word that gives you illumination he will distract you are we together now it says how shall we escape if we neglect carelessness so great a salvation apostle i love jesus but my problem is this money thing i don't know why the thing is not answering come to the house of god he can open you up and give you an understanding apostle mine i'm in ministry but it's not working the doors have refused to open apostle mine is i quarrel with my wife every day if we don't quarrel in 24 hours it means one person was not around come to the house of god are we together yes sir apostle i'm tired of my children my school fees is being their school fees is being increased and they're coming with results that are, 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 are very discouraging come to the house of god you've gotten a lesson teacher for them it did not work come to the house of god listen i'm not teaching laziness but the house of god is a supernatural place the house of god is not a place of convergence uh, where people it's, it's not just a diplomatic center there is a difference god is there for in the sanctuary God. that's the difference it's not because a mic is here uh -uh. it's not because a keyboard is there it's not because there's some level of organization and structure happening the difference is the presence of god are we together it will be a total waste of your time if god is not here in fact it will be evil to your destiny if god is not here oh come lay down the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary hallelujah this is what we get in the house of god do you know a believer should not be two years old listen a, this is my opinion now and i believe it is consistent with scripture no true believer should be at least two years old or let's give it let, in all fairness let's say three years old in a strong functional ministry where the word of god is exalted and the ministry of the holy spirit is exalted and the believer does not have some kind of evidence the evidence of spiritual growth conformity to the character of the christ the evidence of results superior spiritual understanding the evidence of transformation becoming christ-like and becoming a superior version of yourself by by bringing scripture based ideas that replace some of these ideas that lead to a defeated life when you come to the house of god you must know what you are here for number one that you are here for encounters to know jesus to understand god number two to understand yourself you see the true knowledge of god also leads to the revelation of you are we together 
the more you know God the more you will understand yourself because you are born of God so the more you learn him the more you learn yourself you understand the 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 nature of man. then you are transformed transformation is a real miracle dear people of God more than receiving prophecies more than receiving a miracle more than falling and standing the real miracle most destinies need is transformation and transformation is twofold the first dimension of transformation is a replacing it's called renewal a replacing of old wrong devilish demonic culture driven ideas that do not sustain the power to lead to a victorious life it will take a long time for you to be free from it because it did not come in one day it took you 30 years declaring your loyalty to an old unscriptural idea it's going to take a while for the spirit of god to win that war in your mind that you can finally give up something that is destructive then you come to a new superior life are we together meditate on these things he said give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all honestly God sees my heart that my passion for everyone here and our global family is not just to remain indefinitely loyal to a man of God to a ministry it is that your life will be so superior in quality that your life will be i told you remember the teaching we just finished that your results are evangelists too you are not the only one who should be preaching the gospel your result is a preacher too and that there is a sermon that only your results can preach don't forget it Romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 and 19 18 starts by saying for I reckon I come to terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed where in us there is a glory that should be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of create the creature waited for the manifestation not explanation the manifestation of the sons of God challenge yourself enough of excuses enough of flimsy excuses Lord I open up my heart I admit I do not know my heart is opened let light come the Bible says to receive with meekness Colossians 3 16 the engrafted word he says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing yourself and then I, I can't remember the scripture now that to says to receive with meekness the engrafted word it takes the quality of meekness for that word to dwell in you richly do you know what meekness means number one the malleability of heart and then number two the openness of the same and it starts by acknowledging your insufficiency outside of the influence of the world that means i admit that there is something i do not understand about the dynamics of signs and wonders there is something i do not understand about kingdom wealth and prosperity there is something i do not understand about peace there is something i do not understand about whatever it is the moment your heart is open then you are ready for that light to come you don't come to the house of god hoping let me hear uh, okay it looks impressive i think uh, there's some sense in it no the devil is already cheating you when that becomes your mentality you come with your heart opened even jesus at age 12 he was in the temple accessing light even though he was the word are we together please make up your mind every time you find yourself in the house of god everything that happens from the opening prayer up to the time where the word comes they are all a coordinated effort to see that your spirit man is opened 
and that the word of god comes to you because listen to me when the word comes then you can arise it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you isaiah 60 and verse 1 it says rise to a new light for your light is come so whilst you are seated whilst you're following in one minute i like you to pray a desperate prayer open my eyes oh god open my eyes that i may see open my eyes that i may see open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes i need to understand your ways i need to understand your ways the darkness of today's world cannot allow for amateurism your life can go for it lord i need knowledge that puts me in command walking in dominion practically hallelujah one more scripture just came to my spirit um that should be psalms 74 please give us 74 and 20 let's see 74 and 20 have respect unto the covenant why for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty in other words lord there is a system of immunity that exempts and exalts the believer he said lord be attentive to it you must understand those precepts why for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitation of cruelty this world without christ does not have mercy the devil will remain unhindered say unto god the bible says psalm 66 and verse 3 how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you it takes light we're going to start a two-part series tonight i've been very concerned about not only the powerlessness of believers but some of the things that are happening in our world today our nation today as a result of the inability of the saints to produce results you know as a man of god you are you are in touch with what happens around a territory the reason is because whether it is good or bad usually you are about the first to know if it is good people will send it to you as an expression of thanksgiving to join them in sharing their joy if it is bad you'll be the first to know because they hope that by informing you you're the closest expression to god that they know and so they'll inform you in hope that you'll do something about it i have been concerned at the degree to which believers have been communicating their frustrations as far as results in this kingdom is concerned i receive text messages every day with believers asking questions like is this god real is the faith life real apostle i've lived all my life serving god but it looks like there is absolutely nothing and i'm not just talking of young people so you would say okay they are just young people i'm talking of people even elderly people who are saying this is not fair i've spent 50 60 years of my life only loving jesus my life is synonymous to church synonymous to fasting and prayer synonymous to spiritual activities but i cannot seem to have a hold of results that become a consolation to my christian experience and it, you see when you see these kinds of things and people send these kinds of text messages if you love jesus and love people it should touch you it should it, it's like a, a a report card now you see what is happening the shameful idea of ritual killing I'm, I'm sure you are you are aware of it where people are already maiming one another as an alternative and you will be surprised that if you probe these people deeply most of them may come from christian circles or be affiliated to christian circles 
the rate at which people are redigging wells of traditional practices the rate at which people are redigging wells of occultism and witchcraft these are things that the church was almost rejoicing that we are triumphing over now satan is manipulating these things and people are returning back to villages and saying look let's dust that file again at least from 1990 to 1995 as a, an idol worshiper these are the things i have to show for my idol worship you ask me to leave it based on a proposition that jesus would give me superior results i've given him 10 15 20 years and there is nothing to show until you can prove otherwise i am going back it's easy to stand and criticize people and say don't go back to this don't go back to that people are not stupid in the height of desperation they will do anything that works are we together yeah. there are many workers in church and i don't just mean here church world over whose lives continue to be a representation of pain shame nothing at all seems to be working they are the chief recipients of prophetic words and it looks like just nothing is happening what then is the problem is it that god lied or is it that scripture truth cannot come from scripture what is what is this that is responsible for for instance look at the poverty the the the, the financial decadence people continue to go down and it is not some of these things may be attributed to laziness lack of productivity but i have seen people who are commendably diligent and yet it looks like it's the same situation there has to be an explanation hmm. are we together yeah and sometimes you see when people come with this kind of pain and burden as ministers of the gospel sometimes we make that mistake of just sweeping these things under the carpet as if just forget about it it's not an issue and the person is says it's not an issue my children are dying my family is in shambles my entire life does not have any representation of the excellence and the glory of god now i'm coming to church to find meaning and explanation as to why these things are happening because the church is the correct place to come and find explanations we've done our best to hear what the government has to tell us We've done our best to hear what politicians have to tell us. We've done our best to hear what the business world has to tell us. We've done our best to hear what, you know, intelligent people, the academia has to tell us. We have to come and listen to what Jesus has to say. Are we blessed? So I'm teaching tonight on a two-part series. We'll start tonight and we'll end commanding the supernatural. I want you to pay attention pay attention to what you are learning because it holds a powerful key this will be part one and then we'll finish up tomorrow you know I, I want you to pray for me and let's pray that God will grant us grace because there is a backlog there is a course curriculum we are growing intentionally and because um, of the limitations on our times of contact there is so much to learn we have to pray that God will grant us grace and continue to direct us on how to get these truths to believers so that we be strengthened so that we be established because our lives and destinies for some of us spiritually financially we're in ICU is that true when if someone is in ICU and the doctor is chewing gum singing praises and wondering if it's your loved one what will you tell the doctor are we together someone is in icu and there is no sense of urgency whatsoever no. a good doctor will be up and doing thinking planning doing everything that he or she can do that's that's the kind of urgency that i have in my spirit we shouldn't wait until september october november then we just say thank god in all things mm -mm, this is a year of marvelous light by september october you should stand with your results as witnesses around your lives and this will be your testimony in the name of jesus christ
Matthew chapter 8 from verse 25 the disciples came to Jesus this was when they were crossing to the other side and awoke him saying Lord save us we perish we're reading to 27 and he said unto them why are ye fearful O ye of little faith then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea and there was great calm let's read verse 27 together one to read but the men marveled saying what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him may that be said about you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in John chapter 15 and verse 8 John chapter 15 and verse 8 jesus christ himself was teaching and he said herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit that ye bear much fruit he says so shall ye be my disciples in fact go to verse 16 16 of the same chapter here's what jesus had to say again you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you you know what ordain means ordain means to legitimize your operation is that true i have ordained you that you should go and do what not bring back stories no when he sent you you don't go and come back with stories you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain Our God is a supernatural God. This God that we serve is a supernatural God. The faith life is a supernatural life. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Here's what it says. Our Lord God, it says, Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee the god that we serve is almighty he's not just mighty he is almighty el shaddai the multi-breasted one are we together now the god of heaven the faith life is a supernatural life god himself is the supernatural god and we came out of God and even in redemption we are products of the mercy, the blood and the cleansing of that supernatural God. The entire activity of redemption and salvation was supernatural. Dying and going to Hades, the place of the dead, collecting the keys and coming back to life without blood, ascending to heaven and offering his blood as a ransom a sacrifice returning back without blood a supernatural life the supernatural is not for men of god alone the supernatural is not for those in the fivefold ministry alone our idea most times believers have an idea of the supernatural to mean if you are getting into ministry fivefold ministry they mean then you can be open to the supernatural and you ask the average believer give me a picture of your idea about the supernatural they say falling down while that is true that is the least expression of the supernatural it is just the one we're used to seeing in many pentecostals and charismatic circles where people can fall down shout under the anointing with no direct contact usually with the man of god and so that is the closest idea to the supernatural but th that is far from god's idea of the supernatural 
God is a supernatural God. Let me repeat. We have been called into a supernatural experience. The faith life is a supernatural life. And it is in the manifestation of the supernatural. Listen carefully. That Jesus is glorified. That the saints are exalted. And that principalities and powers are the, the defeat of principalities and powers become clear to all and sundry when the supernatural comes into play the supernatural refers to any manifestation that is beyond the scope of science any manifestation that seems to defy the law of process in as much as the law of process is part of the kingdom laws but there is a provision to rise above and beyond the limitation that process can bring process is important but that under certain conditions a possibility exists in the economy of god to rise above and beyond the scope of science and the scope of process are we together every time it defies scientific explanation every time it defies the regular course of things then it is supernatural god does not negate the laws of life they are his laws but that there is provision to arise and communicate higher and superior spiritual laws to the end that jesus be revealed and the end that jesus be glorified write this down please the supernatural is an interplay between faith and the anointing write it down please the supernatural is an interplay of or between faith and the anointing that means it is the union the coordinated union of faith and the operation of the anointing that produces the supernatural or the word of god and the spirit of god you have to understand this the word of god and the spirit of god the two principal tools that produce the supernatural so the supernatural is the union of the word of god and the spirit of god of faith and the anointing so here in part one i want to take on the first aspect the dynamics of faith so you can put that under commanding the supernatural part one then in bracket the dynamics of faith listen very carefully i'll show you why many believers are unable to produce results results that are consistent results that last an interplay between your faith in god the workings of god's faith in you and the anointing let's look at the dynamics of faith In Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 for our background very quickly Acts chapter 20 and 32 it says and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace notice what he commends you to God and then his word and he says it is able to build you up maturity and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified scripture number two first john chapter five and verse four first john five and verse four it says for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world whatsoever not just whosoever whatsoever is born of god it sustains within it the ability to overcome the world and it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith even our faith most believers know about a concept called faith most believers have heard sermons on faith most believers have read books
books on faith but i submit to you sincerely that most believers do not understand the dynamics of faith what faith is and how it works you want your life to be extraordinary you want your life to be supernatural you have to understand the dynamics of faith write it down what is faith our fathers have taught us we have read it from scripture we have gleaned upon the wisdom of men and women through history who have demonstrated with proof in their lives that the subject of faith is not just some dogma somewhere it's not just a mere doctrine they have proven it through different circumstances that faith works let me give you two or three definitions of faith are you ready number one faith means absolute confidence in god absolute confidence in god i'll give you three definitions generally speaking faith means absolute confidence in god number two this is a definition i have found useful to me and it has come as a result of my personal study on the subject of faith faith is the name given to the action the action of obedience that you take faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction faith is the name given to the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction honor of who god is and the integrity of his word the action of obedience that you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word is called faith so action of obedience based on conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word most believers do not know that when it has to do with manifesting results on earth here whether it is um in the area of finances in the area of your spiritual growth in the area of ministry career whatever it is that the way god designed this system it says the heaven of heavens belong to god it says but the earth has he given to the sons of men you know what that means that means i taught you here that the dominion of the believer is shared dominion remember we discussed this when we were dealing with intercession last week that the heaven of heavens belong to the lord but the earth he has given to the sons of men that means for anything to happen in the earth realm please pay attention there has to be a union of heaven and earth are we together when jesus wanted to come as the word made flesh he did not just take a decision from heaven alone there had to be a participatory work here on earth at least we know people like anna the prophetess mary had to donate her womb joseph had to be there to there were many people who played roles otherwise jesus would not have arrived the idea listen to me the deceptive idea that anything god wants can happen as a way of honoring his sovereignty you are right but as far as manifesting realities is concerned you are very wrong you know because we know that god is sovereign and you are right it is within his power if god vetoes man he's still not wrong because he is god are we together but he has chosen according to his wisdom and his predeterminate counsel to make man have to participate in everything that happens on earth so when it has to do with manifestations it is not all up to god and it is not all up to man 
there is a role that god has to play there is a role that man has to play ignoring and neglecting your role as a man in hope that god is mighty and he will make things happen may be one of the explanations behind the frustration of many believers you hear sayings like one day go better have you heard it that is a very bad way of thinking it may be a sociological way of deriving comfort in the presence of failure but i guarantee you hoping that one day things will arbitrarily change is is a total waste of time it takes a foolish farmer who will get up by september and go to one of our farms in the suburbs in abuja you see him with a car a tractor and different bags where are you going to i'm going to harvest something and you say oh really you didn't tell me you planted you say i hope i know that the way rain fell i can guarantee that there is corn for me now think how intelligent that person is does that sound smart and yet that is the exact same thing people do about life they get up and say god loves me too much to allow me to suffer and we drag spiritual and emotional bags and we stand in the middle of nowhere hoping for a bumper harvest when it has to do let me teach you this again when it has to do with your life and destiny listen to me you have an active role to play an active role to play the challenge usually is the confusion between the idea of grace and faith the subject of grace if not properly communicated would lead people into laziness because of the awareness of a concept called the finished work of Christ and that is a fact based on scripture it is not a lie but then most people do not understand what the grace of God is I have done teachings on that and I hope that we'll be able to touch a bit on it. But maybe just for a minute or two, let me talk a bit about it. You see, the grace that most people talk about in the body of Christ is only one dimension of grace. Grace like wisdom is multidimensional. Are we together now? Yes. Wisdom is not just unidimensional. Wisdom has different facets. For instance, divine direction is a subset of wisdom divine strategy is a subset of wisdom so when you say you have wisdom we must vet what dimension of it so also grace the dimension of grace that most people talk about is called saving grace there are different kinds of dimensions of grace there is the grace that saves is that true yes and then there is what we call enabling or empowering grace that grace does not do for you it rather empowers you to do with a strength that is not yours it is still grace so the idea that the only dimension of grace that is there is that jesus has finished everything just receive it by saying i receive it's not um those who communicate these things are sincere people don't get me wrong and what they are saying is not a lie it's only that there needs to be completion to it because many believers have tried it and it has not worked are we together now so when you talk about saving grace the the if i will use that expression the freest of all the graces is saving grace because that one is the finished work but you sit down there and don't confess your sins and don't open up to jesus and you see that you will go to hellfire is that true you still have a role to play to hear the word and take a step of faith come and stand before jesus and make that declaration according to romans 10 8 to 10 then you are saved here's my definition of grace generally speaking every good and perfect gift that comes from above listen carefully given to the saints and accessed only through the office of the christ is called grace every good and perfect gift that comes from above for the benefit or the blessings of the saints but it is only routed through the office of the christ that means you cannot access it except through christ Here's how the Bible puts it. Ephesians, what now? Is it three? 
that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ this is a definition of grace blessed be God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings that is the definition of grace all spiritual blessings but they reside in heavenly places and are routed to the saints through the office of the Christ you cannot access that spiritual blessing ignoring the office of Jesus the Christ of God are we together so wisdom generally speaking wisdom is grace faith is grace are you seeing that now power is grace everything that comes from God through Christ to man is qualified to be called grace So it does not just mean unmerited access when you ask the average believer define grace he will say unmerited access that is only one dimension in fact i i let me tell you sincerely the the word unmerited is not very accurate it is only unmerited when you are talking about saving grace in that we cannot save ourselves are we together now yes we cannot save ourselves so jesus christ does the whole work for us in what we call theologically speaking his substitutionary sacrifice and then we receive it by faith the bible says you are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god you know not of works lest any man should boast the works there is the work of the cross not the work of believing there is a labor dimension to faith so many believers have found an excuse to live defeated lives because they believe that everything it is just it is if god wants to give me he will give me if god does not give me it means it is not for me it's not true are we together a coronation service was held in honor of jesus when he resurrected but he had to go to heaven before he could sit on that throne he did not just appear he went literally and sat down the lord said to my lord sit down and he sat down and the coronation service was held for him until today jesus the epitome of grace is still making intercession yet he was the one who said it is finished so what is he interceding for jesus is seated at the right hand today He's not just gisting and say, bring me food, angels. You don't know what I suffered with this evil man for 33 years. He's making intercession for the saints. The recipients of that finished work, he's still making intercession. Listen, listen, listen. Understand it. Don't, don't sit down. There's no tell them. Uh, uh, by the way, let me use this opportunity to... <laughs> let me use this opportunity to correct something listen please please listen jokes apart we are responsible people and i know that there are shouts of joy and victory sometimes when we are preaching people enjoy what god is saying and they open their hearts but please let us minimize irresponsible distractions are we together please i'm saying this for visitors and people when you come to koinonia listen to the word if there's something to shout about you will most likely not be the only person shouting but the moment you are making noise and distracting people please let it be known to you that it may be a distraction and we love you but we may not appreciate that that is something that i think we should learn there must be discipline in the house of god are we together please we're not watching a movie this is jesus speaking to us so we must be very disciplined sometimes there are people of course neighbors may not have the courage to tell you look you are this i'm not following what they are saying but I, it's my responsibility and under god i am saying this please let it be a practice when there is something to shout and laugh and rejoice we do it with joy and there are times individuals who honestly receive the word i'm not saying to feel embarrassed you know with your expressions but you know the kind of shout that is inspired by the spirit and there is a kind of shout that is just is is, is a distraction Praise the Lord. Do we, have, do we have that now? Please. So when we come to the house of God, let's be orderly. Let's be orderly. When you go to see a president or you go to see someone, you don't misbehave in the office. You behave well. 
let's respect jesus and respect his house it's a place of joy and liberty but it's not a place of foolishness we must let the world know that we are saved to be wise are we together praise the lord i just thought to use this opportunity and just quickly bring that in so we are discussing the subject of grace are we together let's go back to faith really that's what we're talking about four times in scripture as you know let's run through it very quickly the bible talks about the just living by faith number one habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 media let's work together habakkuk 2 and verse 4 it says but the just shall live by his faith the just shall live by his faith romans 1 17 the just shall live by his faith it says for therein is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith the first scripture for reference galatians 3 11 galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 it says but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith then the last scripture hebrews 10 38 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him so four times in scripture cutting across the old and the new testament the bible tells us that when it has to do with living the just lives by faith hallelujah and then in romans chapter 10 and verse 19 romans 10 and verse 19 tells us now that this faith that the just lives by did i get that romans please find it for me faith cometh by hearing huh 17 thank you you correct it just right romans 10 17 so then faith cometh somebody say faith cometh that means before faith arrives it is not there and when faith comes you will know it is that true faith comet and that the technology is that by hearing and hearing by the word of god faith comet by hearing and hearing by the word of god don't assume you understand what i'm saying please pay attention god is teaching us this we're discussing the subject of commanding the supernatural so that you will understand this for yourself and then you can help another believer too to command very very supernatural dimensions of results if you're in agreement say amen, amen. everything the believer does in this kingdom is faith dependent faith dependent every victory that we will ever get and walk in the experience of is faith dependent now as you've heard me say i'm going to repeat it again and i want you to listen very carefully this time that faith is predicated on two main attributes of god please write it down bible faith is predicated on two attributes of god there are two attributes of god that are responsible for producing faith in the believer faith that works faith that moves mountains are you ready number one his integrity his integrity his integrity his integrity numbers 23 and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent read with me had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good that means 
this is the reason why you can trust God that the moment he says a thing then expect that there will be a performance the moment he speaks a thing there will be a doing connected to it are we together Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 we are examining the integrity of God as one of the platforms for producing Bible faith and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken verse 2 it says for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 but without faith please look up it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he exists the word he is there means he exists and then that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him say hallelujah that means when we seek him we don't seek him in vain he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him his integrity the word integrity is very important because it comes from the word integer sameness consistency predictability as within so without that is the the essence of the word integrity god has integrity are we together yes tomorrow is valentine <laughs> i'm just informing you And um, there are people who because of the reality of the burden that the season demands can go so far to invent all kinds of skills to lie and say I'm in Lagos whereas they are here or all kinds of things they don't have to be evil they are men they do not have integrity are we together for, it's just an example don't harass anybody <laughs> don't tempt me to say anything about valentine i intend to just let it lie there praise god integrity we live in a world today where people have made all kinds of promises is that true and have not been able to keep it and if we are to be honest with ourselves all of us at one point or the other have been victims of this there is something you once said that you probably did not do not because you did not want to do it probably you told a family i am coming to visit you and your flights did not leave on time it does not matter what the excuse is with respect to that performance it is still not a show of integrity but the bible says god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that she should repent do you know what that means when god is determined to say or do something concerning your life you can take that word that means listen most times we speak you know one of the principles of integrity is the second one that i'm going to talk about they are interconnected you must check your ability before you speak is one of the principles of integrity if I stand and I'm motivated and I go somewhere where there is a building project and they are looking for 10 billion for the building project and I'm excited because of how they clap for me and I just stand there irrationally speaking like many people do and I say on behalf of myself and Koinonia we donate 4 billion naira. You'll be looking at me while I'm talking. <laughs> Believing I know what I'm saying. Are we together? And I now go back and the organizers call and say, we thank you so much. So uh, how is the transfer going to be made? Is it going to be just a single transfer? We are happy for this. And I said, don't worry. Uh, now I begin to think, how will I make this thing happen? You see, I may be sincere, 
but it is not integrity i'm explaining something to you so you understand god does not speak and go back biting his finger to say i said too much no if god looks at you and says this year you must rise that word listen listen there are no guarantees in life honestly believe me when i tell you this god will send you to do things and he will send you to places that don't have any human guarantee the guarantee is the word he gave you and the person who gave you that word when god told me to come to abuja here there was no, nobody signed any form to say you just come we'll support you no god said it i trust you we die there you see that listen this is the character of faith most people do not know god will never tell you what you can do he will never tell you what is possible before your eyes god will speak to you like he's speaking to himself in fact one of the ways you can verify it is god speaking is that it must be a mountain bigger than you if god tells you something that is so easy within your reach go back to bed and pray again you had a demon not god listen god will speak to you as a kingdom financier and while you have just five ten million in your account home and abroad god is going to be saying write the list of mission agencies that you are going to be building houses for them and you are writing and feeling stupid that you are hearing god you regret pressing into clarity of hearing because now you don't have an excuse to say it's not god you are hearing and you write out over 30 40 50 mission agencies and god says a time will come soon when you will be giving them at least a million dollars every year and while you are writing there you are laughing at yourself your wife comes to check what you're writing you cover it because you know that if she sees that thing hear me you are writing it knowing that the one who speaks does not have a future there is nothing like future with god so he's not waiting to see he has already listen if god speaks every mechanism to be put in place to make sure that word comes to pass if you understand his ways it's already there one of the ways you know that your season is ready is when god speaks god does not speak when things are not ready i've taught you this maybe not in abuja I hope that we'll have the time to discuss it to know that the voice of silence is the voice of god too when god is not talking he's saying something you need to understand the language of silence are we together there are many of us right now who have plans and goals and visions that from a human standpoint when you look at it as a january god told you you will celebrate christmas in your own house this is february already you are laughing because the investment you were hoping will work you've not heard from them and it looks like what you are hearing is not very the bank is not the bank is not cooperating with you when he said that you said amen because someone was going to buy a property under your care and you were hoping 10 percent from buyer and seller will come you see the thing about god is god speaks in a way that nothing around you nothing around you will attempt to replace him if there is something that he can ease that can easily take his place he will not speak i know what i'm saying no his integrity now listen how are you sure that i don't have some money in my pocket maybe i have something maybe a hundred dollars a hundred naira something in my pocket if i say come and collect it and you are you are looking at the signs to check whether is there any shape of money or whatever it is that's already unbelief because 
you will not get anything that way remember what james said let that man not think he will get anything from god i'm just giving you an example all right if i tell you come leave your job let me make it serious leave your job leave everything and come to me here and i will give you something from this pocket now that can build you a house buy you a car and sort you for the rest of your life it's just an example if i ask you come let me give you something you will eat with today it makes sense because notes are usually flat and small but i say leave your job come and stand and let me put my hand in this flat pocket and give you something that you will use for the rest of your life you will most likely not believe it but that is the character of faith before you focus on what god is saying focus on who is talking are we together see god is mighty I i'm praying for you that every unbelief that makes you believe god is small every unbelief that makes you think god is a joker or he's praying april fool with you i pray that it will live your life now in the name of jesus christ I have seen God do things in this small life I have seen God move in ways that no human explanation would suffice I have seen God do things in my life I have seen God do things in this ministry that at the time he said it it did not make sense but total dependence on his word ah. God is speaking to you tonight. He has told you many things that don't look impossible. That, are, that don't look possible. I want you to stand and trust him. He's told you, mother, that before you go to be with the Lord, you will see God lift your children. And as it is, none of them seems to be showing any signs of a visionary life. I want you to trust that word and trust the one speaking. I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that babu wanika marka i have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that babu wanika marka yeah. Babu wani kamarka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamarka Babu wani kamarka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamarka Lord I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that listen i was in cameroon last year when this song came it was in the morning i was meditating on the faithfulness of god on this subject of faith this is the first time we're singing it here i'm sure soon this my people will find a way and sing it I was meditating on everything God began to tell me. Usually I travel and I travel with my notebooks. Notebooks of 10, 15 years. And I open those rough notebooks and I see some of the things. And usually when I write what God said, I put dates. And I'm looking at some of those things. And I said, ah, that was when this song came. That I've searched and searched. Let me tell you this. Never laughed at a man that God has spoken to you will bite your fingers in shame for the rest of your life you may see a woman now you may see mama now you may see that preacher two members know nothing if god has spoken i want you to clear the way because you are about to write another epistle of god's wonder and faithfulness there are some of you seated here the call of god is upon your life you are still in your season of training don't be intimidated by the enormity of the call. Don't ask where the money will come from. Don't ask where the anointing will come from. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able. God has integrity. 
God has integrity. God has integrity. He can be depended upon. Listen to me. Time will fail me to tell you things that God said would happen in my life, would happen in this ministry that made no sense whatsoever as at the time he said it. Bible faith is not just based on a verse of scripture. It's based on a recognition. Many people have disappointed you in your life. They've said things, I will help you. I will give you a job. Come by January or February, you are used to disappointments and you have added God in the list. When God speaks, he, his voice is sounding to you like that politician who deceived you. His voice is sounding to you like, no. The king of the universe has integrity. This is the reason why we can tell the whole world, come and hear his counsel as he has given us. And we know they will hear because he asked them to hear. Can I tell you this? Many of you are unable to move in your life. God has told you that house will be built. But you are sitting and wondering. All of the connections you think will help you build the house have failed. And you are sitting there saying, God, will you do it? Can I tell you this? There is something about believing God even when you don't understand him let your mind catch up later on but for now i believe you shake away that unbelief shake away that unbelief you are not the first to be a millionaire you are not the first for god to lift you are not the first person god is speaking to the bible is full of men and women who god spoke to them ask abraham gideon was hiding in judges chapter 6 hiding when God met him and told him, he said, Why are you hiding, Gideon? And he said, Why wouldn't I hide? Where are the miracles? Come out of that place of hiding. You are going to defeat the Midianites. The Bible says Gideon blew a trumpet and 30,000 people came. God said, It's too much. This is not how I walk. Reduce them so that the glory, there, there is something I want to do. For some of you, God has spoken to you. You are the breadwinner in your family, a family of over 20 people. And God is saying you will feed them as if you are buying a recharge card. And it does not make sense because you are saying, God, I didn't even go to school. And God is saying, can you trust me? There are some of you, help those under the anointing. There are some of you God sent to Abuja here. You go to Abuja with only one Ghana must go. You are still roaming around wondering, I don't know why I'm here. If God sent you, sit back and watch the monarch of the universe begin to honor your life and honor your obedience. Commanding the supernatural, the integrity of God. I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that hmm. the one who speaks and does it the one who speaks and has the ability to defend what he has said businessman don't sit down and use your bank balance to determine whether this year will be a great year or not. Take your eyes away from those accounting things and look at Jesus. Jesus told you that this year is your year of marvelous light. Believe it. See, listen, 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 listen. As simple as what I'm teaching you is, you will recycle years of stagnation if you cannot believe God. You want to know how to believe God? Study children. Study children. We have some of our little ones here. If I call these children now, in the midst of this fiery service, I call them and say, Junior, how are you? Fine. 
what do you want aeroplane you hear what the boy is saying i asked him what i wanted he's not going to say lollipop children don't say those things again we were the ones who said those things these children said aeroplane and they mean it they don't mean the type we used to say aeroplane and then you stand there feeling guilty for asking aeroplane and that child will come back with confidence and remind you daddy or uncle or whatever where is my aeroplane you were the only one who thought he was playing in his mind and in his world he believed that for you to have spoken you would have vetted your ability to provide it so when god speaks to you and says man of god from where you are the nations will be hearing your voice don't sit down and say i think i have one auntie in canada there is one uncle who loves me you've already disconnected yourself that is the reason why most times god allows everything we depend on to fail then you come to him and say god are you still saying what you said he said i have not changed you are the only one who was going around looking for my word somewhere else i have not changed when i said i will lift you i meant it when i said i will honor you i meant it i hope god is working your heart tonight so that you believe god there are no guarantees in life anybody that gives you any promise of any guarantees only joking at every point of every man's life there are hours he's asleep and at that time is only the god of the universe who gives life men have promised and were not able to live up to their promise there were people who said in two weeks i will give you an appointment not knowing by the next day they were going to transfer them but who transfers god who relocates him who moves him to another branch are we together right where you are standing in one minute lay your hands on your head and cause unbelief lord i'm sorry for not depending on you for not trusting you please follow carefully just do what i'm asking you to do pray and decree and declare his integrity god can be trusted god can be trusted god can be trusted the healer can be trusted the lifter can be trusted the blesser can be trusted the announcer can be trusted the one who empowers can be trusted the deliverer can be trusted in the name of jesus christ thank you very much say his ability that's the next thing please sit down two attributes of god number one is his integrity his ability to be consistent and stay consistent with what he has said number two his ability bible faith is built on the awareness of god's ability his ability second chronicles chapter 20 let's read from verse 6 very quickly please second chronicles i tell you there is a build up of fire in this place second chronicles 20 let's start from verse 6. and said O lord our god god of our fathers art thou not god in heaven thou rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen and in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand you we're reading to verse 9 art thou not our god who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people israel and gave it to the seed of abraham thy friend forever and they that dwell therein and have built thee a sanctuary there for thy name saying verse 9 now the last verse if when evil cometh upon us 
as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine we stand before this house and in your presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction then thou will hear and help he was talking about a, a display of the might and the power of god in second peter chapter one when we read from verse two to four popular scripture second peter one two to four second peter one one two to four grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord verse three according as his divine power say his divine power his ability he says his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be the partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lost his divine power ephesians 3 and verse 20 now unto him that is there are people who are willing but are not able it takes more than integrity to perform you can have the willingness but do you have the ability i want to give you the job but i do not have access you need both integrity and ability he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us listen to me if you can rest your faith on the integrity of god and on his ability do you know what i remember i think it was during the crusade in my village day one or day two i can't remember which of the days now that we had over in december there was someone who was seated somewhere in front i think the person could not walk or something like that and i stood there and all of a sudden i heard in my voice to tell that person to stand up and walk do you know listen i'm a human being too my father and my mother they are both alive you think i you, i want to be embarrassed and just come and disgrace myself in the presence of the whole world no it takes something more than what your optical eyes is seeing how do you tell someone who most likely has gone to the hospital and met consultants and is unable to walk and you look at that person and with one command in the presence of people you don't send a quiet text message and say try to move your leg and let me know let me let me know whether the thing is working many of you have been in positions where someone was mandated to believe you and you felt the pain of not being believed is that true for instance you tell someone sit down here i'll arrange a meal for you and you return back to find out that the person was trying to make an extra arrangement because the person was not sure and you look at yourself and say do i look like someone who will come and waste my time lying to you you see that's an example of the pain in the heart of god when we do not trust him when god says i'm going to lift you and you say god um let me give you a few information that you don't know one i'm in nigeria two i'm not sure you are aware of what nigeria is going through right now number three are you aware that the family that i come from it will take deliverance first before prayer or breakthrough and the rest because of the kind of yokes that are there and then he's listening to you while you are praying and then you wrap it up by saying in jesus name amen and god says look at what this person is saying the holy ghost now leads you to the bible to open it and see the many things that he did can i be honest with you the things you read in this scripture were not parables they actually happened that he parted the red sea it actually happened the sun stood still it actually happened john chapter 20 the last verse 
many miracles the bible says did jesus in the presence of his disciples jesus did not do a few miracles many miracles give us the last verse what will be the last verse now is it verse 20 or 31 let's do 30 and 31 many miracles jesus did or many other signs he did in the presence of his disciples which were not recorded in this book 31 he says but these are written that ye might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing ye might have life through his name listen to me say after me in the name of jesus, the name of jesus. i believe the lord i believe, I believe his promises over my life because he is a god of integrity and he has all ability now you are manifesting bible faith there is a justification for fear except that when your fear collides with these twofold realities the integrity of god and the ability of god one time the father of i think an epileptic patient came to jesus and said that if you are willing you can help my son jesus said i am willing see that and then he manifested his power and the son was healed there are people who have ability but they do not have integrity there are others who have integrity but they do not have ability the one who can really help is the one who has both integrity and ability you doubt whether god has ability look at what god is doing through our lives it will take an unwise person to not see that this is the ability of god men cannot do this there are results that are outside of the range of men it will take the power of the holy ghost the ability of the spirit is someone learning now so for whatever it is that god has told you remember back in his word is his integrity and his ability so we can believe him that he tells you this year 2022 will not be like any other year in your life and yet you read everything in the news and you see that it is negative and negative all through and the devil now tells you you better don't fool yourself don't create any expectation because it will not happen i'm speaking to you tonight by the spirit the god that we're talking about is the god of integrity and the god of ability when you find what he has said from scripture when you find what he tells you in your personal place of prayer you have found the forces that engage his integrity and engage his ability i've had the privilege of helping many people in my life and i say this with all humility and to the glory of god and sometimes people come to me especially maybe children or something seeking maybe help school fees or whatever it is and many times as i look at them i'm already wrapped up with compassion and i'm looking at them and i'm asking myself already what do i do to help this child and then you see them come and they say please we don't know if you can help our child and the school fees maybe something as little as 20 30 or fifty thousand. and i look at them and i'm happy because i have the ability it is painful to have integrity and not have ability and you stand looking at this poor child with tears holding a good result but no opportunity for continuity because the wherewithal is not there and how many of you have been before a situation where you know it is within your power to solve it that restfulness and that confidence god will never scratch his head over your issues no there is nothing you will ever go through that will make God say, wow, this is interesting. Gabriel and the rest, are, are you aware of this? Your situation will never be as bad as that of Job. Your situation will not, never be as bad as the saints. Samaria, where women were eating their children. Have you eaten your child? Have you considered it? Then the famine is not that bad and yet in one day by this time 
tomorrow literally by this time tomorrow not not a prophetic tomorrow a real timeline tomorrow and things just change like that let me stand by the spirit and speak to someone that in the name of jesus by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow what you wrote on your prayer request by this time tomorrow what you prayed over this morning what you discussed with your husband by this time tomorrow over the issue of that job by this time tomorrow in the name of jesus christ please sit down it takes integrity and it takes ability some of you by reason of this teaching tonight i'm going to be sharing with you a few principles now we'll pray you may have to return back home tonight and get down on your knees and say lord i'm sorry i i, I have allowed the circumstances around my life to blind my eyes to make me think that you are not there for me i have allowed circumstances in my life i've allowed things around me to make me feel you are less powerful than you are but listen to me god is almighty he is not just mighty your situation notwithstanding do you believe this about god god does not do april fool god does not play games with people when he looks at you and says i am lifting you find rest he will many things god has spoken to us about that does not make sense right now make sure you don't throw that piece of paper it was you and him that wrote that keep it and watch the wonder working power of god are you blessed now you see the reason why many people's faith does not work because their faith is not based their, their faith is based on nothing permit me to call it a fired faith that is not standing not backed up and supported by anything i believe god based on what i just believe god don't ask me that question i believe you can't get results that way why do you believe him if they ask you now why do you believe that god will do it for you now you have an answer because he's a god of integrity and because he's a god of ability yes he's a god of ability he knows where to draw destiny helpers and financial killers to come and stand by you yes sir a dear pastor friend i think a year or two maybe three years ago he called me one day and he said apostle he said you have to pray for me and we're joking very nice wonderful friend and he said something happened a man called me from somewhere and asked and said they told me you are close to apostle joshua selma and he said yes he said i want to send so 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 amount to you help me and give him and the man sat down there on that call and he said i won't lie to you apostle the thing paid me how can this man know that i'm also a man of god and call me and find out and say do you know apostle he has protocol he has people he has a finance department and you now call me as a man of god and then ask me to give you my account number let you wire money and say help me and give him and it's not like you even say okay this part is for you take it and we laughed over it it was so funny but then when i was done with that call i just thought about it i said my god if it means him using a fish it will look for you from wherever a fish has no business can the teeth of a fish bite coin but not when god wants to get it to you he is that powerful if it means for a donkey to talk ah, no shadow you will light up 
Mountain you will climb up Coming after me No wall you will kick down Why you will feel it out Coming after me No shadow you will light up No shadow you will light up Mountain you will climb up Coming after me No wall you will kick down Listen up. Now let me give you very quickly. We're about to pray. My God, the waters have been stirred. Keys to producing Bible faith. Let me give you a few keys right now. Someone is about to fire on belief out of your life once and for all that you will begin to produce extraordinary results results that will surprise you that those who knew you january will turn and say what happened to you from last week to this week what shifted and you tell them my faith from little faith is moved to exceeding great faith keys to producing Bible faith. Write it down, please. Mm. <laughs> no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. Coming after me. No wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. No shadow you will light up. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up. Coming after me. No wall you will keep down. Now please sit down. Listen. I tell you sincerely. I, I may not claim to understand everything i'm a student also even in the school of faith but believe me when i tell you i know what i'm talking about the things that we have seen the things that we have heard the things that our hands have handled even of the word of life this is what we teach if you pay attention to what i'm about to share with you you will manifest bible faith and command the supernatural in a way that you will be surprised the mountain you are seeing is only relative to the size of your faith listen a little ant hill with respect to the ant it is a skyscraper but with respect to man it is something you just walk over your faith can add your height in the spirit you become a giant in the spirit and now join the heroes of faith who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions are you ready please sit down very quickly key number one what does it take to produce bible faith that commands the supernatural number one light the first key that controls bible faith is light the power of knowledge put light slash knowledge light knowledge knowledge of what the promises of god knowledge of what the principles of the kingdom light you dominate with respect to the kind of spiritual illumination that you have please listen to me listen very carefully you will never rise beyond the level of light and illumination that you have psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course our fathers have cried over the issue of light high level spiritual illumination the opening of a man's eyes to know the ways of god i've taught you here every koinonia service is a feast of light 
God opening our eyes. It takes light to turn night to day. It does not just take time. It takes light. You can be in a dark stadium and then on all the lights and the lights can come with a coordinated effort and turn that night in that stadium to look like day. That people can play a football match in the night and yet when you are viewing you think it is day because of the level of light that is there. Everybody say light. Hmm. Most believers are ignorant of the promises of God. Most believers are ignorant of the principles of the kingdom. It is the reason why many people cannot manifest Bible faith. Question, what do you know that God has said concerning your finances? What do you know that God has said concerning your excelling in life? What do you know that God has said concerning victory over demons, over principalities and powers? Your faith must be based on what God said. Question, do you know what he has said? And do you know all he has said? Because he did not just say one thing alone. I have taught you here. When Satan came to Jesus, the reply of Jesus was, it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread. It is written. It is written. It is written. Even when he was manifesting his purpose and destiny, lo, I come in the volume of the book, as it is written of me to do thy will. There are things that have been written concerning you. Do you know them? Can I tell you this? It was not Apostle Paul that wrote them. It was not Peter that wrote them. It was not the minor and the major prophets that wrote them. Holy men wrote as they were inspired. It was the Holy Ghost speaking through the mouth and the hands of men. I know what he has said. That I shall be the head and not the tail. I believe it. That I will be above and not beneath. I believe it. Listen. Make up your mind to be childlike when it comes to the issue of faith. There is no big manism with faith. Many times the things of faith look very elementary. So many people in, a, in an attempt to show maturity, they ignore these things to their peril. It is this childlike approach that has produced giants of faith. When you listen to fathers like Papa Copeland, teaching on faith, sometimes it's so elementary, it looks like they're just... It's like, it's like a kindergarten kind of thing. Yet you look at the results. They have defended their understanding of faith for decades. And they are still doing it. Are we learning? Everybody say light. This year, you must make up your mind. Make up your mind. That your eyes and your ears will remain gates that will be flooded with light so that your destiny will be able to command results when you know little you cannot do much with little this is a kingdom that is knowledge dependent this is the kingdom that is knowledge dependent dear people of god go and find out let me tell you this there is a kind of knowledge that you need how to know what you don't know you have to learn how to know what you do not know how to find out what you do not know don't wait for knowledge to come and meet you search for it my finances is not working and you can take a day or two listen to me in prayer and fasting maybe you're a man of god and ministry is struggling financially deal with it so that it does not distract you in the future you don't want to have to manipulate people because of financial pressures open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from out of thy law lord i want to walk in integrity as a minister open my eyes to sort this area once and for all and light from heaven you will see something you have been looking at but was not seen and when you stand on the strength of that light 
he said write prosperously because of truth when you find truth they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh I look at my life today and with all humility I thank God for the time and the attention I gave to certain things I am grateful to Jesus for granting me that attentiveness ministry today would have been a disaster if these keys were not found let me charge you therefore some of you may need to minimize running around and sit down it is time to feast on light light with proof are we together You're a man of God and it looks like the supernatural manifestation of the hand of God is not seen in your life. No miracles, no signs and wonders. You can stay with the word. I remember a time in my life, I had my, my phone, had there's, there's this um, audio, all the words of Jesus, only the words of Jesus. The words of Jesus alone. Not any other word. Everything Jesus said in the Bible, they compress it in an mp3 i would listen to it and sleep and wake up and listen to it and sleep and wake up and listen i want to hear what jesus is saying he must talk to me everything in the gospels down to revelation it will repeat i will put it on auto repeat and I'm, i don't know if he's a, 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 a an advice medically i'm just telling you what i did i slept and woke up and slept and woke up and slept and woke up until my spirit knew that something was happening there you must invest in knowledge you must invest in knowledge please go and buy books don't wait for knowledge to come and meet you go to koinonia global there are all kinds of teachings listen to them don't assume don't assume that you know and don't listen once I submit to you I'm standing and I'm speaking to the whole world I would not stand here and tell lies there are there are materials audio materials that I have listened to single-handedly I know you may think it's exaggeration but I've listened to them nothing less than five to eight thousand times one message I put it on auto repeat like that and it keeps counting the goal is not just to be aware of what is being said the goal is to transport it into my spirit The alternative to this pathway is to go and look for power somewhere and it backfires back on you but if this is how you want to take God's way God is not a magician he's a miracle worker this is the labor dimension of faith that most people do not want these scriptures that I'm quoting is not just coming from heaven thank God for his grace but there was something in my mind for the Holy Ghost to work with yes it's God speaking through me but he's using my brain and my mind too to speak are we together there are believers today tell me one scripture you know concerning your protection nothing tell me one scripture you know concerning your victory nothing tell me one scripture you know that tells you your home is secured nothing tell me one scripture you know nothing i just know god is faithful we know general statements like that God is faithful. He can't fail me. I know. Tell me one scripture you know that guarantees that ministry will not fail for you. Tell me one scripture you know that guarantees that God will use you greatly. As I'm saying it now, just do the rehearsal in your mind. Many of you will find out that in truth there is almost nothing. No. I found your word and I did eat it. It was a joy and I rejoice into my soul. Is God challenging us? Go and get Bible on tape. Go and get Bible on um, MP3. Get all kinds of things. Listen to it. Put a flash behind your television that has scripture playing. Listen to it. Instead of listening to something that is Luciferian and is destroying your life. The remaining small faiths that you had died as soon as you listened to it. I'm not saying don't disconnect with your world no but invest in your spirit you are going far and can i tell you the days that we live in it is men who have faith that will survive these days believe me you cannot use another man's faith 
the same way you cannot use another man's light to drive he can help you temporarily but you will need your own headlamp to drive two what is the second key to producing bible faith meditation meditation first timothy chapter 4 please from verse 15 to 16 let's hurry up so we can pray first timothy 4 15 read with me please koinonia is projected ready one to read meditate upon these things uh-huh give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all meditate on these things meditate on these things do you know what it means to meditate to meditate means to ponder until understanding is established to meditate does not just mean to look uh -uh. the goal of meditation is to produce understanding knowledge gives you awareness meditation gives you understanding or comprehension now you understand the working knowledge of that principle behind what you have read most believers don't meditate unfortunately did you know that most of the world religions encourage meditation even though they have the way they do it but people sit down and meditate until their bodies their uh, what they call it now their spirits leave their bodies believers don't meditate how in the world are you going to study a scripture when you are running to go and get some food in the kitchen and you're just your bible is on your hand and you quickly come back and you just say i finished it at least i finished one chapter now you look for one three verse or four verse chapter in psalms and just read it and just breeze it over and contained in it is the power to set you free let me tell you the power of meditation all the disciples came to check for the resurrected jesus and they did not see him in a hurry they ran back yet he was there but a woman came and she looked at the tomb it was empty and she refused to go she stood at the garden there and she kept looking she kept looking looking at the tomb all of a sudden she saw two angels and he said this jesus began to talk to her it took staying there to see the disciples came and they just looked and ran back but the woman stayed there stayed there until she saw meditation means to stay till you see god i've listened to many messages about finances i've listened to many messages about spiritual power about the gifts of the spirit but there has to be something i do not understand open my eyes now the spirit of god can refer you to a message that you will listen to that will buttress on that point at the end of it you say this is it by the next time you go for a meeting it will be as if you put a charm in your pocket there will be such manifestation of the power of god because you have found it someone prophesy i will find it in the name of jesus the mystery that connects your today and your tomorrow you will find it in meditation as you are meditating give the holy spirit a chance to show you things that can change your life give the holy spirit a chance to show you things that can turn your life around i listen to my own teachings myself i don't say i'm the one who preached it i listen to it this message now i'm going back to listen to it no matter how tired i discipline myself to listen because in it i will hear something that came from him through me most believers are lazy meditation is a labor dimension of faith you will take out time and sit down and think the psalmist will usually say sila sila means stop and ponder and think i've taught you here that there are times you can listen to a message of one hour for six hours because you are stopping after five minutes what did he just say and you have to look for another scripture and look at it and repeat again until your spirit hears something i pray for someone as you begin to meditate may you hear what others did not hear may you see what others did not see in the name of jesus christ are we together number three are you ready now the third step to manifesting bible faith is the power of prayer 
prayer mark eleven twenty four. you cannot divorce bible faith with prayer mark eleven twenty four. therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if you pray when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them prayer you've studied the word you've understood it and many times you see prayer is like salt you are never you don't you don't really pray too early or too late any part of the faith equation you can water it down just like salt if you cook with a salty water the food will not go bad just because it's a salty water if you forget to add salt at the end of the cooking you can still put the salt prayer is like that so from the beginning of your study you can start praying even while meditating you can start praying and then you can allocate a proper time for prayer let me tell you how to pray this kind of prayer you see when you are praying the kind of prayer that produces faith you have to pray in line with the area or the issue where you are trusting god to see results in are we together yes aside from praying in tongues you can now pray in the name of jesus i decree and declare this grace for favor is coming upon me i'm studying favor i know that i need it i found out the necessity for favor in my life i've studied it i've studied materials and you are praying your mind is on the idea of prayer while favor while you are praying believers don't pray or we pray amiss you can pray i spent one month it was even in february i remember i don't know what year and i can't remember i wrote it down i spent one month studying on favor because i found out that ministry is hard without favor if the favor of god is not on you you would do ministry as if god did not call you you will suffer financially you will suffer emotionally nothing will happen in your life and you may think it is not an issue except that you wouldn't know when you begin to compromise in ways that will surprise you because of financial pressure so i knew that if i did not get the favor of god it would be risky i studied i studied read materials every scripture that talks about favor in the bible as far as we know i read it and meditated upon it studied the lives of specific people according to the scripture that says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise studied the lives of people who i saw the favor of god walking the day that grace landed i knew it had arrived i welcomed it it was a triumphant entry into my life and i shut the gate you are not going out again now that you are in here and when it comes he speaks he speaks you think you just like me just like that no <laughs> i just felt embarrassed over what i said but it's true <laughs> you don't just like people like that my dear people there is a grace so if everybody hates you in your office before they sack you go and get teachings on favor remember what i taught you about territorial dominion evil will continue when you leave it when you see signs of hatred it's already that favor is not there don't sit down and be hoping that they will sack which one is easier to lend favor or pray that the manager will be sacked let the principles of favor and stay there what if the the person who hates you is the owner of the company when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him please don't downplay what you are learning today the favor of god upon your life all of a sudden you come to a place and you you see that god himself begins to open doors for you your life becomes an expression of the mercy and the grace of god and people will come to meet you and say how come this is happening you will tell them it's the grace of god but you will explain to them too that i can show you there is a way there is a way the favor of god can come upon a man 
many of us here are in need of that grace for favor it is clear everybody say prayer so we're exploring the keys to bible faith number one knowledge light number two meditation number three prayer please invest time praying you're not going to have strong faith without a rich and a robust prayer life but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost take out time to pray use your night if god grants you that grace most people are busy in the day except if you dedicate the day for a retreat use your night and pray while you are praying every unbelief is giving way and now you can trust god number four are you ready the fourth key to releasing bible faith is word-based confession word-based confessions psalm 107 and verse 2 let's hurry up please psalm 107 and verse 2 let the redeemed of the lord say so let the prosperous of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so the first instruction is say the second instruction is don't say what you want say what he said say so means repeat as you have heard homologio confess repeat as you have heard let the redeemed of the lord say i am redeemed let the blessed of the lord say i am blessed let the lifted of the lord say i am lifted so you don't just talk your words become a bible-based confession if it is in line with what god has said i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath exalted by the spirit of god according to deuteronomy 28 1 and 2 are we together now you have to believe this by the power of the spirit that in the name of jesus no divination and enchantment i don't know about you but about me no divination surely they shall gather but because their gathering is not of the lord they will scatter as soon as they gather you are in ministry you better know this because i tell you sincerely it is only god when we get to heaven that you will see the amount of divinations and enchantments daily over your life i say humorously that it's only when we get to heaven that we'll know what part of the food we ate that was designed to kill us and that's the one you you probably enjoyed may no evil come near your dwelling in one minute while you are seated i want you to open your mouth and begin to declare everything you know the word says about you don't think this is a childish act in the spirit speak i am the head and in the name of jesus i'm not the tail above and not beneath gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising in the name of jesus christ i grow in wisdom i grow in stature i grow in favor with god and with man i spend my life serving the purposes of the kingdom in the name of jesus the fullness of my days i fulfill a thousand shall fall by my side someone speak ten thousand by my right side none shall hurt me with my eyes will i see and behold the reward of the wicked pray oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory in the name of jesus christ immune from the scorching tongues of men i go from glory to glory grace to grace in the name of jesus i am like a well watered garden planted in the house of god therefore i flourish in the courts of our god even in old age i am fat and flourishing someone prophesy blessed is the man that feareth the lord 
that delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Speak over your body. I walk in health. In the name of Jesus Christ. Longevity is my portion. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? Listen, listen, please. Listen. One of the assignments of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence where you no longer can speak. The only thing that comes out of your mouth is <sighs> Nigeria. That's not a word based confession. When you wake up in the morning while you are stretching, that should be your speaking. This is the day that the Lord has made. When you are leaving your house in the morning, you get up with joy. My going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. I am blessed in the city. When you are about to travel it to your village, you confess that I am also blessed in the country. In the name of Jesus Christ. That no enchantment and no divination against me listen you don't need to live in fear when you can speak you hear a negative report don't insult whoever is speaking because people are at different spiritual levels someone looks at you and says look it looks like um this your body everything is all right you can thank them and go back and shut the door behind you a body has thou prepared for me in the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree and declare my organs are functioning properly. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Ghost. As my days are, so is my strength renewed. You have to believe this thing I'm telling you. You are a man of God. Speak over the work that he has given you. Don't wait for someone to prophesy over you. In the name of Jesus, Koinonia, you are blessed. You are going from glory to glory, serving the purposes of the kingdom with love and integrity serving god sincerely souls are coming to be saved jesus spent his life speaking the word of god himself spoke let me tell you many of us what we call speaking is lamentation if it is not the word of god you are not doing bible-based confession speaking your problem to god yes to yourself is not helping anything you speak the word of god call your children can I tell you parents let me charge you as your children get up before they go to school lay hands on them give them confessions to make I'm blessed highly favored anointed serving Jesus that's right and you give them a big hug forward march to school so that before they hear rubbish there there is already a covering of scripture don't let other people speak into the life of your children and you are silent part of the assignment of priesthood is speaking speak over your home walk around from the kitchen to the bathrooms and you are declaring in the name of jesus the hand of the lord is upon this house everyone who steps his feet in this house is blessed i decree and declare carry the photo of your loved ones lay hands on it carry the photo of your family members lay your hands on it decree and declare declare ye that thou mightest be justified confession are you learning now bible faith is released at the instance of confession I made up my mind to love Jesus so much but to love my destiny too so much you will never coerce me into speaking negatively about my destiny I could laugh over things when I hear people say it but even my spirit knows what I take seriously I have no business saying anything over my life and my destiny that I do not intend for it to happen are we together parents let's manage anger and trust God for victory over it because many of us have produced children that look like they are cursed and that cause came from us when you call a child stupid boy you call a child arm robber you call a child whatever prostitute you call a child whatever name by the time they get to teenage 
that prophecy has built many of us that's what has been hovering around your head negative things dull head how are you and they force you to say sir and you are agreeing and before you know it you find out that nothing works for you but let me speak over your life if there is anybody who has spoken over your life whether in ignorance and they have said things over you that is hanging over your life i stand tonight by the privilege of priesthood and i declare every negative speaking over you that has been programmed to your destiny let it leave your destiny now in the name of jesus please sit down we're almost done number five the third step to releasing bible faith is actions of obedience please underline that one this is a major requirement if it is to be called bible faith in addition to knowledge in addition to meditation that produces understanding in addition to prayer addition to confession your faith should not just stop with confession this is the major challenge of pentecostals and charismatics we have defined the entire scope of acting upon the word to just speech it does not end in speaking there is a doing actions of obedience deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 just write it for reference it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do take note to observe and to do all his commandments which i command thee this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above the nations of the earth too and this blessing shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god there is the doing of faith joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth then he says but thou shalt meditate there in day and night you see your mouth you see meditation now he says that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success john 13 and verse 17 final scripture for that point john 13 and verse 17 if ye know these things happy are ye if ye do them the doing part is where many believers miss it out on the on the the equation of faith most believers do not do haven't heard received instructions we do not do the holy ghost speaks to you you do not do scripture speak to you there is no doing and every time there is no doing you do not commit god to perform Bishop Oedeko says, faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. The, the demands that commit his integrity to perform. For instance, you want to prosper. You are finding out the secret of kingdom prosperity. Now you've learned God has spoken about giving and all of that. It does not just stop in giving alone. There is a place of diligence and value and productivity. Now you are a giver. You've given tithe. You've given offerings. But you are not productive. You are going to be poor. Believe me. At best you will struggle. You will just have one time breakthroughs that come. But you cannot perpetuate wealth that way. A diligent hand shall be made fat. Are we together? You are a man of God and you desire excellence in ministry. There is an engracing of God that comes upon you to anoint you. But it says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That means there is a place for study. And if you do not stay with material, stay with the Holy Ghost to study, shame will be imminent. most believers do not satisfy the conditions that are connected to the promises they desire to see happen in their lives can i tell you this every promise of god to you 
has a condition connected to it find out the condition and obey find out the condition and obey for instance the bible is clear as to those who serve idols that you cannot serve idols and serve the living God. You cannot mix fresh water and, and salty water together. There are people who serve idols and then they, they come to church and expect things to work well for them. I've shared with you the scripture. Woe to those who go down to Egypt. Those who pass through fire and do all kinds of necromancy and divination. If it is not Jesus Christ only, then it is not him at all. Are we together? I'll tell you the reason why many people live defeated lives even in the area of finances. Sincerely speaking, and I'm, I'm not, this, this is an opinion. In my opinion, I believe that most people are lazy and then those who work are not productive. Pro, being productive is not activity. It is intelligence. Intelligence on your level is what brings productivity. Many people are just shadow boxing and hustling laboring from morning till night they are not circumspect the bible says to be circumspect to walk as wise and not as unwise conserve your energy and coordinate it intelligently are we together yeah. actions of obedience there is a direct connection between relationships and victory and excellence the Bible teaches that. So after you have studied the principles, then you now begin to learn the principles of relationships so that by it, God will connect you to strategic destiny helpers like the law of honor, like the law of value. You understand these principles, you are now ready to rise. You are only having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and when your own obedience is complete believers listen to me please you must be ready to act on the word you must be ready to take steps of obedience please underline that because for many of us this is where we are found wanting we know what god said should be but we have not taken our time to study the demands the demands for an excelling life the demands for an anointed life it does not just come by luck actions of obedience number six am i right on that the sixth key to producing bible faith is thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 thanksgiving do not downplay this principle it is powerful thanksgiving be anxious for nothing the word careful there i'm repeating this because i want you to learn my my intent is for you to get knowledge be careful or anxious really for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god someone shout thank you jesus thank you. one more time say thank you jesus thank you. can i tell you this thanksgiving is proof of faith knowing that the god you are praying to is a god of integrity and the god of ability you can thank him even in advance lord i thank you because i know you always hear me jesus prayed jesus prayed father i thank you at the tomb of lazarus will thanksgiving be the right thing to do at the tomb of a man who had died three days father i thank you because you always hear me when jesus was about to distribute bread to multiply bread the bible says he lifted it and he gave thanks thanksgiving is a mystery that multiplies everything you thank god for cannot remain at the level that it was as at the time you were thanking him please look up to me let me teach you a powerful principle resist the temptation that comes to make you complain about what you think god has not done for many of us we need to go back and say lord thank you i may not be in my own house but thank you that i have rent to pay without stress my children may not be doing well in school but thank you that i have children male and female nigerians we have to be careful i know that things may be challenging as a nation 
which is not unusual with the nations of the earth especially at this time but let me tell you sincerely you must learn to say thank you someone again say thank you jesus you will hardly have the opportunity to complain when you're wrapped up in thanksgiving you get up in the morning lord jesus thank you this is a beautiful day that you have made i am grateful thank you because you love me i can rest in your love thank you because i can trust you thank you because this is a great day thanksgiving is powerful there is there is there is an energy that comes from thanksgiving that edifies even you the one giving thanks you don't want to be around a naggy negative person tomorrow is valentine again thanksgiving maybe i should just say a word or two don't depress yourself by saying my husband I've, I've been watching him he has not gone out to buy anything my wife my this and that please for god's sake give your destiny a chance to be happy and tomorrow is an opportunity to defend your wisdom are we together you get up in the morning lord it is only the living that can praise you i am grateful thank you it is i have only gary in the kitchen but lord i say thank you in as much as i know and i expect a lot more than this but i am saying thank you somebody again say thank you jesus apostle you don't know there's not so much in my bank account still say thank you jesus hallelujah i was told that there was someone who was angry with life and he was going to go and hang himself and he warned his wife and all the people around him he said if you see me going to hang myself don't even try to come near me to say sorry just allow me to do what i want to do and as he was on his way to go and hang himself grumbling and saying this life is not fair and all of that he saw someone who was watching him and he said why are you looking at me and he says please can you since you are going to die can you remove the clothes that you have and help me with it because it doesn't once you hang there's no issue of nakedness can you help me with these clothes on your way to go and die and the person said really and it occurred to him that he had taken the clothes that he had even for granted and he was going to go and hang himself and here was someone praying saying since you are going to go and die please help me with your clothes can i tell you this your current level no matter what level you are is somebody's prayer point let me repeat it your current level spiritually economically etc is somebody's prayer point do not take your eyes away from what god has done and then you look at the things he has not done and you begin to nag and complain and get angry one more time say thank you jesus i know that i want to stretch to begin to pray for five six hours but the fact that i have a consistent prayer life even if it's 10 10 minutes thank you jesus thank you the fact that i can love you and somebody can give me money to bribe me and i can say no thank you jesus believers we need to live thankful lives one of the ways to walk by faith is to see what god is doing all the time and say thank you lord we're in this self-contained is it that we can grow is it that this family thank you jesus it's not a license to remain in mediocrity but let me tell you thanksgiving is powerful when you thank him multiplication will always come thank him for the little you have thank him for the job that you have don't complain every time you see people applying for that same job that you want to leave yes you can leave but thank him for it don't live in anger and you are frowning around i don't know what kind of man i married self this man is as if he doesn't hear the message he's always looking at the preacher and nothing is entering his head why don't you go back and say lord thank you at least i have a husband and at least even though the man acts the way he's acting thank god that he submits to the authority of jesus you think that's a little issue the head over you you want to know who he submits to 
if it is not Jesus you are in trouble lift your eyes and say thank you when you go back home say thank you some of you will need to roll on the ground and say thank you Jesus you kept me alive this is February don't wait until it is December before you carry some falls rolling on the ground you can thank him every day and you can thank him every time the last key and then we'll wrap up the last key that activates Bible believing faith is patience patience hebrews 6 12 patience hmm. that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises faith with patience most people are not patient on god can i tell you the truth there are times that god would seem to come for you immediately but there are times that god will connect his manifestation with the law of process and you will need time is god speaking to someone now because we live in a world of hurry sharp sharp if it does not happen immediately it is not god we want instant growth, instant anointing, instant maturity, instant everything. There are times that no matter how spiritual you are, you will need to subscribe to the law of time. And the reason why God allows time sometimes is because you are not yet matured and ready to receive that blessing. So while it is in process coming, he's training you and building your mind. There are people today who, if you check their prayer requests here, what they wrote, instead of them to write something gradually, they can write something like 11 billion or 20 billion. And the, per and the person who is writing that kind of thing, he has never held even 1 million of his own money. I can tell you, God is a God of speed, but he's not a foolish God. 11 billion for some people may be like recharge card, but for some people, that is what will send you to hell and god loves you too much his son died for your sins he's not going to just play with your salvation <laughs> 11 billion is a lot of money no matter how much money you have are we together 11 billions can 11 billion can do many things it can kill including you the holder of the money there are many things you have no business thinking about that it will force you to think about there are many places you have no business going that's what I mean by can kill everybody say patience, patience. one more time say patience. patience listen to me this is where the devil cheats many of us I've said this for many years if god wants to give you just to use an example if god wants to give you one million next week satan will give you two hundred thousand now five five naira so that it will look plenty because you are in darkness you will not know it's five naira <laughs> you think you have so much money until you come to the light and you find out that you've been piling five five naira can i tell you every time you cannot wait for isaac you will give birth to ishmael every time you cannot wait for isaac you will give birth to what will fight isaac when he comes <laughs> it's true impatience has cheated many believers many believers two weeks to your breakthrough but you couldn't wait and you said you know what i'm resigning that job as soon as you just resigned they just told you that all the people in your level the company just had a breakthrough and they distributed all of them to go and be director somewhere you ran back and they say don't near this company again <laughs> just go don't near this place again 
I have learned the power of patience even in ministry you must be very patient with God as he makes you you must be patient with God as he builds you listen carefully I'm wrapping up now there are many of us right now the one problem you have is impatience you do not have the patience to allow the word of God manifest in your life that obsession for everything to happen now it may not be like that it is impatience that is driving many many young people in this country to get into practices what does money ritual seek to achieve it's impatience the person wants to become a billionaire overnight impatience impatience has pushed people to join gangs clubs demonic satanic organizations covenants that will plague their children and their children's children because of impatience listen to me we live in a world where when people see you and they say oh i was your classmate i was your this till now you don't have a car till now you don't have this and that usually you will feel indicted and you feel that pressure there is power in patience because you give god a chance to prepare a table before you and with honor bring you into seasons that will last are we together impatience is dangerous it has destroyed people it has destroyed ministries it has destroyed businesses it has destroyed relationships it has destroyed marriages it has destroyed families impatience you need to give god a chance for his word to work in your life i made up my mind that i will continue to press for the best of god but can i tell you every level where god has not brought me in i have no business going there whatever god has given me if god gives me a cup with tea and bread i will take it with honor while i wait for the day turkey will arrive you can force yourself to catch turkey somewhere and suffer because you don't have the backing of god you understand what i'm trying to say don't be under pressure to eat tomorrow today don't be under pressure to wear tomorrow today nigerians let's be careful africans let's be careful there are people who borrow everything borrow clothes borrow whatever the only thing you are permitted to borrow is vessels borrow vessels borrow not a few help that person please are we together get out of a fake life and be patient anybody who laughs at you if you can stay in one bedroom now stay there with honor and be saving the money that God is helping you with don't get faith is not foolishness the pressure to show that the world is working is what has driven a lot of people into trouble and beware of associations that force you to step into a tomorrow that God has not brought you there you have friends and they tell you they are going to an expensive restaurant some of them may have wealthy parents and they are going to spend five five hundred thousand that night five hundred thousand is all you have home and abroad don't make that mistake of carrying your destiny and making the mistake of Esau are we together it's one of the prayers that I prayed for myself that God should never allow me succumb to the pressure of moving before my time and entering seasons that were not ordained of him it is powerful when God opens the door for you with honor and with nobility you will enter a door but you can force yourself and die at the door there there are people today who are in debt because they got into things that their faith level had not reached to prove a point if your child you cannot pay 3.5 million naira for the child look for a school that is within your range every range has a school fees that i mean there are people there who are giving their best are we together i say it respectfully especially for those of us who live in the fct here we have to be careful when i came into this city i found a spirit 
that makes people to do things that they have not yet gotten to there is a pressure to show that you are succeeding people will borrow a car borrow anything at all why fake what can be real be patient are we together you practice this that i've taught you tonight believe me ladies and gentlemen you will find your faith walking and you will see yourself walking in the supernatural in a way that will bless you these are not my opinions these are truths that i live by our fathers of faith have shown us this pathway it pays to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise for someone god is speaking to you right now kill impatience in your life it's going to drive you into debt it will drive you into hypertension avoid unhealthy comparison avoid unhealthy comparison this one has this that one has that what a, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you can be inspired but reject associations that put pressure on you anybody who cannot appreciate you the way they are the way you are it then means that you should not even be in those circles are we together there are many of us who are doing well respectfully speaking even as parents until we join certain groups that started putting pressure on our finances you were doing well and your wife is cooperating with you she knows that you don't earn so much and she's willing to be patient but we started joining all kinds of groups and associations that destroy our potential for growth it's always said to cut your coat according to your size it is true i know what i can do in ministry at this level i know what i cannot do in ministry at this level i'm not ashamed of it i'm not i'm not embarrassed with growth i will grow patiently to what god intends for me to be i will never give myself sleepless night because of any of no 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 is someone speaking to us now yes reject the pressure that comes with this world that we live in today you mean at this level you are not in your own house maybe that can challenge you it can inspire you that's fine but the moment it intimidates you and you say no between now and april i must buy a house i don't care how the money comes satan will say what did you say you are inviting me and of course he will come let me challenge you not everything is receivable from people have the maturity to vet people before you receive things from them i'm not this is this is the house of the lord so you learn this before we pray even as a man of god there are people who have brought gifts for me and sometimes i look at what they want to give me and i look at the person i'm not belittling them but i understand the law of process where did this come from your mindset defends your results and there are things that when you want to do and you don't have a mental construct that defends it there is problem there are people who have wanted to give me certain gifts and i just blessed them and laugh over it and prayed on it and gave them back someone just comes and is looking like an arm robber and looks at you and says here is the paper of an estate and because your hand is always collecting everything you collect something and by the next day they say don't talk just follow us you say what <laughs> just follow us and you see newspaper will not say they gave you a gift exposed you know journalists <laughs> patience can save you a lot of things there are people they come to you and they say look there is something you can make money in two weeks you should be afraid already are we together you come and drop prayer requests here you see me kneeling down sweating and praying and you don't pay attention to that prayer you stand up and go somewhere and the moment someone tells you come let's go somewhere you are already look the bible gives us wisdom run away you get to a point of no return and start fraternizing with demon spirits dip your hand in blood eat human flesh go through dehumanizing things preachers listen our lives and even ministries in levels don't 
rush your season if god gives you 20 members teach them with honor teach them with your whole heart don't say apostle joshua sermon whatever he is doing i must get that grace i can pray for you if it's not part of your call it will not work can i be honest with you i thank god for what god has done in ministry today but sincerely i stand before the god of heaven and he sees my heart if this is the only congregation that god gives me worldwide to be able to lead them it is an honor and a privilege i will lead and preach and shout like never before pressure impatience has cheated many people be patient with nigeria too be let me repeat it be patient with nigeria too some of you are running to nations whose catastrophe is on the way coming too don't you think that the bible says darkness shall cover the one you have seen now is better at least you have seen it you can walk away around it the one you have not seen i i'm not saying don't travel abroad you, you understand what i'm saying save johnny you go if god is leading you there but there are many people who left living like kings in nigeria and went to live like slaves somewhere in the name and guise of greener pastures can i submit to you by the authority of scripture greener pastures is where god is there are poor people in every nation there are wealthiest people there, there are wealthy people in the poorest of nations and they are wealthy by a global standard your portion comes through his word it does not just come by location i think i've said enough tonight rise up on your feet spare me two or three minutes and let's pray this is important for your destiny we are going to be praying lord i am prepared to begin to command the supernatural in my life i'm tired of an ordinary christian life i'm tired of a life that is barren of results i want to begin to manifest extraordinary results in my life in a way that brings glory to the name of the lord lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice everywhere inside outside the overflows go ahead and pray is someone pray lord help my own belief let my faith come alive let my faith come alive in the name of jesus resting on the integrity of your word resting on your ability let my faith come alive i am ready to walk by faith live by faith talk by faith command results by faith pray just one more minute declare over your life every aspect of your life by the ministry of the word by the ministry of faith i'm commanding results in the name of jesus results that bring glory to the name of the lord in jesus name i pray listen let me advise you when you go back home i want you to prepare and listen to this message again don't assume you got everything i was saying listen to it again the just lives by faith if you do not know how to live by faith in these days and in these times you will live a defeated christian life are we together now by next week we're going to take part two and i'm going to be teaching you the ministry of the spirit and of the anointing i will be showing you the dynamics how faith and the anointing works the ministry of the spirit in commanding the supernatural we need to be a distinguished people distinguished by faith and distinguished by the spirit hallelujah praise the name of the lord 
and then i hope that that next week also we'll have the opportunity to announce a few of our major ministry activities and we'll have the opportunity to just bring these things to our hearing so that we begin to prepare ourselves for the many mighty things that god is going to be doing in and through our lives this year we give him thanks for all that he's done so far and we know that this year indeed for us as a global family it will be a year of marvelous light in the name of jesus christ very quickly let me make the altar call as always god will never never send people here without having a few who need to make jesus lord of their lives i believe in the ministry of jesus as savior then as the christ and as lord there are many of you who are here in the main auditorium all the overflows down to the basement outside and those following online you are saying apostle i need to place my faith in jesus but i need to know that jesus he wants to give you an opportunity right now or we have those who are rededicating their lives they are saying even though i know that the message is over but i do not want to leave this place without acknowledging the lordship of jesus wherever you are these two categories no one will force you but the holy ghost is already speaking to you i'm going to count one to five may i please request that you leave your seat very quickly and come and stand before me here as i lead you in this prayer there are people coming i begin my counting now please clap for them as they come don't allow anyone to be the first to come win that war and come come to jesus two those coming from outside please quickly koinonia let's celebrate them as they come come to jesus he is able to give you a new beginning god bless you sir god bless you ma come is this the best you can do for them koinonia jesus is calling all who are weary all who are heavy laden come he will give you rest if you are still in the crowd and you are saying apostle i really want to come but i'm not sure if i'm saved or not make your way come and join them he's ready to give you a new beginning right now a new beginning hallelujah i'll lead you to pray if you're joining them please come very quickly i appreciate every one of you those who are standing in front here and all who are standing in the overflows and you who is following in your home your office wherever jesus is right there with you and as i lead god's people to make this prayer i want you to pray that prayer right where you are believing that jesus christ would give you a new beginning hallelujah may i request if you can that you lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me let it be loud let it be clear from the depth of your heart this is to jesus say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i acknowledge you as my savior my lord and my king i declare that from tonight i have eternal life in my spirit the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name please keep your hands lifted father thank you so much for these precious people your people they have come acknowledging your lordship over their lives in response to this call to salvation i pray by the authority of scripture that the power of sin be broken over their lives and that you grant them the grace to walk in righteousness grant them the grace to be recipients of your grace by the power of the holy spirit i declare that you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace may the lord bless you may the lord keep you and may it be an exciting journey as you explore the riches of this faith life in jesus name i pray 
amen and amen thank you so much for making this decision may i please request that you follow um a gentleman waving his hands the counselors are there they'll be very very fast with you let's celebrate them as they go just a minute and you'll be back to your seat celebrate them as they go celebrate them as they go celebrate them as they go hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me encourage you again that the year of marvelous light is also the year of in gathering i am very passionate about souls as a ministry it is our number one assignment to help people experience jesus please everyone who is part of this vision must be actively involved in the ministry of soul winning make sure that you do not come to church alone there are families there are people if it means for you to sponsor people to bring them to the house of god so that they can be blessed so that they can encounter jesus as savior then for those who are saved already they need to encounter jesus the way to learn the ways of the kingdom and then to be empowered koinonia is a ministry where everyone is invited provided your heart and your desperate desire is to know jesus to understand the ministry of the holy spirit and to be empowered to live a victorious christian life while serving the purposes of the kingdom let me encourage you therefore to be very intentional and to be very active about the ministry of in gathering do not let anyone go to hell around you knowing that there is an ark there is a city of refuge an opportunity for them to encounter jesus hallelujah and for those who may not be able to make it you can always let them know that they can follow online this is not some marketing of men of god pushing themselves the agenda of the kingdom is greater than personal interests are we together we're living in times where it is very clear that the days are wrapping up whether we like it or not that is the truth and we must give our very best serving the purposes of his majesty within the time that is left so let me encourage us take it as a personal responsibility and for all those who travel out of this state out of this nation week in week out i want you to know that we love you we sincerely appreciate you even our online family we thank you so much for participating every week thank you for inviting others i look forward to coming to your regions to hold conferences and as god will grant us grace we'll see how how much god will grant us grace to cover this year in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you may the lord increase you the word of god is causing you to grow in stature in the name of jesus christ your love for Jesus continues to multiply. Your intimacy with the Holy Spirit continues to grow. And the results that follow oneness with Christ is speaking in your life. I decree and declare that your faith is alive. By reason of the word of God, you will return with testimonies in the name of Jesus. This week beginning is a blessed one for you. It's a week full of signs and wonders. A week that is characterized by the manifestation of the supernatural go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name i pray amen after the thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was